My name is Lisa May and I'm from North Carolina and I am the parent of a child with classical homocystinuria. When Sarah was first diagnosed with classical homocystinuria, it was in the newborn nursery at the hospital. Her methionine level came back high, which was a marker for homocystinuria, and six weeks later we got a definitive diagnosis at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It is so important that everyone get an option to have a newborn screening for classical homocystinuria. Uh, because we were diagnosed at birth, uh, Sarah has had preventative medicine from day one. Uh, we actually lived in Virginia, and had we stayed in Virginia, we would not have had a newborn screening, and we would not have known that Sarah had homocystinuria. Because we were able to diagnose early, Sarah has gone on to be able to do everything that all other kids do, including academics and sports and school. What I wish that the medical field knew more about homocystinuria was a way that I could help Sarah uh, increase her ability to have more protein. Sarah's diet um, in classical homocystinuria consists of eight grams of protein a day that she gets from food. That's aside from her formula, which of course has some good proteins in it. Um, and that's very difficult. If you look on the back of a pack of french fries at McDonald's, there's three grams of protein, and that's almost half of her daily allowance, for, you know. And so you can't go to fast food or you can't have the same things that, you know, your family once did. So for us, it was cooking a lot more of uh, vegetables and fruits and making low protein breads at home. I wish what the world knew more about homocystinuria is that people who have HCU have a difficult time with taking formula and taking medicine and regimenting their diet. Uh, for Sarah, going to a birthday party at age six meant she couldn't have birthday cake or ice cream or have pizza. And as her mom, it meant that I tried to make her snack or her party food look just like her friends, even though I needed to carry that food with me. Uh, each time we went. If we went to a restaurant, we often packed Sarah's food to go with us because restaurants did not have low protein options for her, such as pasta noodles and things like that. So parents and families with HCU have to do a lot of pre-planning before you go on a trip or go out of town or even go to school. I'm Sarah May and I'm from North Carolina and I'm a patient that has classical homocystinuria. A day in the life with homocystinuria is definitely struggling. Um, when I was younger, it was definitely a lot harder. I mean, you can ask my mom, we fought a lot. And um, it would always be like fighting over, do I want to take my medicine? Do I want to drink my formula? Because it, it, was, it didn't taste good. It doesn't have a good taste. And um, just putting myself in a routine was very much of a struggle because like I saw my sisters and my brother, like they didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to wake up and they didn't have to take medicine and I did and I had to wake up and take four pills a day and start drinking a formula and then when I got to school um, drink another part of the formula. Like it was very different but going into elementary school was more of like the most part of my struggle because I was so young and I was seeing everybody at school just be so normal and then I had struggles with like I said drinking formula, taking medicine, having different food. But when I got to middle school, I started to realize like it's okay to be a little different than everybody. Um, middle school was definitely still a struggle just because I'm still finding myself and I'm still trying to figure out who I am and who my friends are. And so that was definitely a little bit of a struggle, but it was getting a lot better. But now that I'm in high school, I am very open and I'm very, I love to talk about it. I love to share with people what my story is. And like, for example, I was in biology class this past year. Um, well, actually last year, but um, I shared with my classmates about my disorder because we were talking about genetics and pedigrees and all kinds of stuff like that. And I was like, hey, that's how I got what I got. And they were all like, for real? Like, that's crazy. And I was like, yeah. So day to day is definitely, it was a very much of a struggle when I was younger. But now that I'm older, I'm just so, it's so normalized to me now. Like, I'm so, like, happy with how I am. And how far I've came from when I was little. So yes, day to day has gotten a lot better, but it was definitely, definitely a big struggle when I was younger. When I'm introducing homocystinuria to my peers, um, I definitely get a little nervous. <laughs> There's a lot of nervousness inside of me, but then again, at the end of the day, like I mentioned earlier, it's my normal, it's what I call normal. And 
it might not be normal to somebody else, but it's normal to me. And like when I'm trying to explain, it, they can't quite grasp it. And that's okay because it is so rare and it's not very well known. It's not like diabetes or like cancer that everybody knows about. This is homocystinuria. And I mean, even the name might catch them off guard. Like that's not a common name that you hear very often. And so when talking to my peers about it, they're like, well, what is that? Give me some more information. And when I was younger, like I was saying, I didn't know everything. Like I just knew, hey, you have to take medicine, you have to drink formula, you have to eat special food. I didn't know like exactly why I was doing it. But now that I've grown up and I've like done my research, I've gone to these conferences which have dramatically changed my life. Like even getting to meet somebody who has HCU because I never got to meet anybody. So like all my peers don't have this stuff. Like yeah, they might have diabetes, they might have asthma, like just simple stuff like that, which is not simple, but nothing that had to change a diet or anything like that. I was about 13 years old when I met somebody that has HCU. Um, the first time I met them was in Indianapolis, Indiana, when we went to our first conference, actually, and that's when we had gotten in touch with Danae and some of the people and patients that have HCU, and I remember telling my mom, like, this is the greatest thing I've ever, like, done. Like, this is the best experience I've ever had. And that's what made us come to this um, conference, because I was like, Mom, I, I want to do it again. I want to meet people. I want to have somebody I can confide in and tell, like, hey, you have these experience? Oh, me too. And, it, like, even I was talking about earlier, Colby, the little girl, she's 13, and she was my age. I mean, she's going through the same things I am, and it's so, it feels so good to be able to mentor and help her and show her, like, it's okay. And, um, yeah, so it was definitely a life-changing experience when I was able to meet somebody like that because, like I said, I've, I've never met anybody. Like, in Kernersville, where we live, there's nobody. Like, like I said, there's people who have certain things and all kinds of stuff like that, but nobody had what I had. So I felt so alone and like that I didn't have anybody who had what I had. And just coming to that conference was just like a burst of joy because it was just like, oh my gosh, somebody has what I have. I heard about my first homocystinuria conference through my geneticist at Chapel Hill. Um, actually, Danae reached out to my geneticist at Chapel Hill and then they ended up telling us and my mom was like, this is a great idea. This is awesome. This will be a great experience for Sarah. And she mentioned it to me. And I was like, yeah, mom, I want to go. And so basically we reached out to Danae and she was like, yes, we would love for you guys to come. This would be a great opportunity for Sarah. You as a parent can learn more about her diagnosis and everything that she needs. And um, so yeah, that's how we figured out just our geneticist was reached out to by Danae, and Danae reached out to us, and then basically we packed up our bags and went to Indianapolis. <laughs> Homocystinuria helps my softball game by the formula I take. The formula I take has lots of amino acids and lots of good proteins for me that helps me build muscle and helps me stay strong. And Homocystinuria has helped me face a lot of adversity that a lot of other kids don't face. And that adversity goes on to the softball field. I mean, I face adversity with playing time and um, being in the field. I mean, how good others are compared to me. So facing adversity with other situations in my life has helped me become a strong softball player and a, so a strong person individually to be able to face things like that. So because Sarah has homocystinuria, there's some foods that we cannot purchase in a grocery store. And so we were introduced to some companies through our geneticist and our dietitian where we would order those foods that would be shipped to us. Uh, low protein foods typically cost 10 times more than food in a grocery store. So for an example, a uh, loaf of bread, if you bought it already made, would be like $10, or maybe nine chicken nuggets would be $15. Then that food has to be shipped to you. If it's frozen, it has to be shipped in dry ice, which there's an additional charge for, and sometimes shipping was $50 and $75. So an order of food was always three or $400 uh, just for that one order uh, to help uh, supplement Sarah's other food that we could get from a grocery store. I will say as Sarah has gotten older, grocery stores are carrying more low protein and gluten-free things, which also sometimes are low protein, which has made it so much easier to purchase food for her in a local store versus having it shipped to our home. So one order of food that I would buy for homocystinuria, it depends on what it was. Um, like 
the chicken nuggets were nine chicken nuggets to a pack. Well, a serving size was three. So for $15, you know, a third of that was one serving. So a box of chicken nuggets would only last for three meals. So obviously, if I was buying uh, wheat starch, which we made her bread with, it would last, you know, a month or more because we were making bread regularly. But like the chicken nuggets, that was only three meals. So we would obviously not feed her that every day. We would supplement with other vegetables and things that we could get in a store because there was no way to afford that on a daily basis. And for our situation, our insurance did not cover any of the medical food, so that was an out-of-pocket expense. Definitely stay on my diet and my low protein because I don't want to have those effects. I don't even want to risk those type of things because I don't know for sure, but just by experience, nothing has like, traumatically happened. I've never gotten sick. I've never had lens attachment. I mean, yes, I wear glasses, but that's because I have a lens. Yeah, I mean, that's just normal things that kids go to. But, yes, yeah, so um, it's never affected me like dramatically. But... Yes, I have snuck food, and <laughs> back on that topic, I have snuck food and tried it, and it has not affected my body, thankfully, but I also haven't done big portions. I haven't gone and, like, feasted on a big meal of protein, and then I'm sure something would change, but just trying a chicken nugget or trying a little, like, lick of ice cream hasn't affected me. I just want to say as her mom that, you know, when she was young, the doctors said to me, we don't want her to eat hamburgers or hot dogs because if she really likes them and then she eats them over and over, it's the prolonged uh, high number of hovocysteine in her body that would cause these adverse effects. So if Sarah tried it one time, it's not necessarily that one time thing that hurts her. But if she likes something and she keeps eating it over and over, then her homocysteine level gets really large. And it's like just hitting against a door in her body that she can't process. And soon when all that homocysteine backs up, then something like a stroke or a blood clot or her lens detaching from her eyes, those are the things that happen. And that's why it's important for us to keep her homocysteine level low. Some foods I'm tempted to try are like chicken wings or something like that, that it just looks so saucy and good or something <laughs> like a salmon or just something that like, just like looks so appealing like shrimp or something like that. That just looks so good. And like I see that on my family's plates or like when they're cooking it, I'm like, that looks so good, but I know I can't have it. And a lot of things don't tempt me just cause like my mom said, I've known it since birth. I don't know any different. I don't know what a full like protein assorted meal look like tastes like and so it makes it a lot easier like not going through where I was eating a whole bunch of protein and then now I couldn't but never eating protein like has helped me dramatically because I love to eat don't get me wrong so when it comes to food I really enjoy it so not knowing what protein tastes like really helped me. But yes, some foods just look too good not to eat. <laughs> but my mom does a great job of making foods that look just like the others to accommodate me. Yeah, it's very difficult as a parent because it hurts me emotionally that Sarah doesn't get to have those things. <laughs> and that our family, um, you know, tried to support her through that, but it is difficult. Um, when there's something that you know you just can't have and you have to make sure that you're protecting your child because you want her to live a long and healthy life. Well, it's true because she asked me as a six-year-old, she said, I can't wait till I get to heaven so I can eat a steak like you guys do. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> Well, it's emotional, for, well, it's emotional <laughs> for parents. <laughs> it, it happens to parents because you want your child to have everything that they want. And there's some things you can't allow them to have. Because you <laughs> love them. <laughs> and I do remember saying that. That was that probably one of my, like, I know I can't say it's my lowest point of life, but one of my lowest points, um, just trying to figure out kindergarten, trying to figure out the next step in my life because I was so used to being at home like nobody had anything to say like my family knew and like going into a whole new world of school where there's new people new friends I mean like people I've never seen before people who have never seen something like what I have before I do remember saying that because it was such a struggle and thank 
you to my mom and my um, doctors, they definitely helped me through those struggles. And I do remember saying that. I was just so upset. Like that day, I just remember feeling, like I said, so alone. And I was just like, mom, I want to eat this stuff. Like I want to be normal. I think I, think I just had had so much fed up that day at school, people saying things to me and just, I just felt so down. And I just remember telling my mom that I was like, I want to go to heaven so I can eat protein. And I think it's important for other families to know, though, that to advocate at your schools, because whatever your cafeteria situation is, it is a federal law that they provide food for children who cannot have the regular meal at the school. And so I talked to the cafeteria manager. And so if Sarah wanted to buy a tray lunch, they could offer her a tray lunch that had, um, there was all uh, fruits and vegetables on it with no milk. And so I want people to know that, that you can advocate not only in elementary through high school but also in college that uh, college cafeterias will work together with families with rare disorders to make sure that children can be just as normal as possible and be like their peers. Some of the mean things that people have said to me because of my homocystinuria is sometimes the formula. The formula has a smell to it and when I would take it in my sippy cup or whatever it was to school I would open it and they would be like, ew, what is that smell? Like that stuff stinks, why are you drinking that? And it puts a smell on your breath. And your breath always doesn't smell good after you drink it and you, need, you feel like you have to go brush your teeth. And I do that now, but when I was younger that wasn't my biggest priority to go sit down and brush my teeth in the middle of school. And um, people would say, your breath stinks or stuff like that. Or if I had a weird food, they would be like, what is that, looks disgusting. Like why are you eating that? And then like get in little groups and like make fun of it or like um, taking my medicine they would be like that stuff's weird like why do you take that stuff like just things like that because they don't have to do that they don't have to take medicine and like sometimes I would take my like I wasn't a good pill swallower when I was younger so I would take it in applesauce and they'd be like why are you putting pills in applesauce that's weird and I'm like I gotta take it or I'm not gonna live and so yeah that was just the struggle I mean now that I'm older people have matured I mean I don't have a struggle with that anymore about weird looking food or anything like that. I mean, everybody's very accommodating and very understanding about my um, homocystinuria. But yeah, when I was younger, it was definitely a struggle. If I could go back and talk to my six, six year old self about homocystinuria, I would tell her that she's a strong person, that no matter what the world threw at her, that she had this and that, um, that it was not gonna be hard forever, that, um, with all the help of my doctors and my family that this was not, this was what was meant for me. God put this for me and that, um, I mean, that this world might be hard and that it might throw some things at you that you're not ready for, but that you're strong and that you got this. And she is our HCU <laughs> hero. My dream for homocystinuria in the future is that we could find some, uh, maybe not a cure, but some gene replacement, some things that would allow children like Sarah, especially who is so limited in protein, that she would just be able to increase her amount of protein that she could um, have every day. Even if we can't cure it totally, that she would just be able to be, um, I don't want to say more normal, because I think that's a, a cliche-ish word, but I would want Sarah to be able to have more choices. And if she could have more choices and live with homocystinuria, I think that that would be a win for us. What I wish for homocystinuria in the future is just kind of what my mom was saying, like not even a cure. Like it would be awesome to have a cure, don't get me wrong. But just to have something that would allow me to have more options. And don't, I like, don't get me wrong again, I don't mind living the way I am. And I, it took a long time to figure that out, trust me. <laughs> but um, I don't mind it. I mean, I'm just so used to it, so it's just so normal to me. I, I mean, I kind of figure this is how it's gonna be the rest of my life. I'm gonna have to take this medicine, I'm gonna, and I either choose to do it or I don't. I mean, that's what it comes down to. But I really wish that, um, we could, like my mom said, gene replacements or just maybe turning formula into a pill. Like I have to take maybe twice or once a day. So it makes it a little more stress, stressful. So that I'm not thinking about, oh, I have to drink this at this time of day or I need to down this so I can get it in my system to play sports. Like just stuff like that. I just wish it was a little bit more easier and like not so costful too. I mean, you have to think 
people who have these low protein, they're not millionaires. I mean, we're not big rich people. I mean, in my opinion, I think low protein food should be the exact same price as regular food. I mean, it's not just easy to go buy out and spend $400 for one child, especially when you have three children, like in a single parent working, it's not easy to just go spend all kinds of money like that. And I just wish that they would understand that kind of thing.